<laughs> this is our interview. Hi. Okay. So, um, state your name okay. and your job here at Street Visit. I'm Gabriela Granados and I am a Spanish teacher here. I'm also the chair of the Foreign Language Department. Okay. So, in your experience, what do you define as holiness? Holiness? Um, I guess being willing to do God's will uh, in a cheerful manner as much as possible, I guess. Um, and uh, be willing to sacrifice uh, as the moment requires and not fuss about it. Okay. I guess it would be one of the ways to define holiness that way. Like a moment? Like, like for example, um, well, a typical example I like to use is when my students write essays. You know, I have 60 to correct in, in the AP class. And uh, and that, that looking at that pile of essays is very hard. Because I'm thinking it's going to take a long time. Sometimes it takes about 10 minutes per essay. So if I look at it that way, it's a long, long time. So I say, well, OK, I'll do 60 essays. And it doesn't always happen, but sometimes I will start and I will even, not a, not, I'm not going to say a prayer over each student, but I will actually offer a little thought to God for that student. So it helps it, it makes it more manageable. Very good. Uh, that, that it, so that's an example of doing something. My job right now is what I have to offer God. Is I don't, I'm not out there you know, evangelizing in Africa, let's say. I'm not doing that or going to Latin America to the missions. My job is here. So I try to make whatever I, I'm doing as as well as possible thinking of God. Okay, um, so moving on to the next question. How does your current stay in life influence the way that you, influence the way that you live out your call to holiness? Okay, so I guess my call in life right now is a mother, yes. a mother of two, and then uh, a teacher here. So, uh, I guess it fulfills the call of holiness, I guess, is to do, to do whatever I'm doing well and to do it, um, offering it to God as a, as a prayer. So um, something that I say like at home, like when I have to do the dishes yet again, another night and another night, I, I call that the rosary of the homemaker. It's like, okay, it's so repetitive, you do it. So, okay, so if I'm gonna do it like, you know, really upset, then it doesn't go anywhere. But if I do it, okay, I offer this to you, God, again. And so it becomes a prayer. It becomes like that. So it makes it more, it, it makes it have more meaning. Okay. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> uh, so how do you live out your call to holiness with your family and your close relationships? Say, say the beginning. How of do you live out your call to holiness with your family and your close relationships? Um... Well, I, I guess with my family, with my kids, um, prayer is important. Uh, we pray before meals. Uh, we pray when we get in the car coming to school. Um, and then um, we go to Mass on Sundays. Uh, just kind of keep the name of God and Jesus and Mary in the home. And then with my friends, um, you know, that conversation always comes up. It's not, it's not that I'm preaching, I'm not doing that, it's just part of my life so it comes out. But also sometimes at home we've done, a couple of times, not all the time, we've done like a rosary. My friends, families come over, we say a rosary, and then we have food and then we, right. you know, carry on like a regular party, but. So would you recommend those things, like practicing these like actions a lot if you're not as religious as others? Would I recommend doing yeah. that? Like for people that like, I don't know, maybe like aren't as like serious. Or... I guess you know it's always you know I wasn't always like this. Uh, I I was not always like this. So it, this has evolved slowly. But when I I went on a retreat um, a while actually that was not a retreat. It was called a recollection. I was going to downtown Holy Cross Chapel, and there I began hearing that you can make your daily life your prayer and an offering. So that's when I thought, oh, I can, yeah, I would recommend this very much, you know. For example, uh, I know most of teenagers don't do this, but making your bed in the morning, and I know this is cliche, 
But it's like, it, first of all, nobody wants to do it. It's hard, but really when you look at it, it takes about 30 seconds. And it, it might help you fulfill a duty that you have to do, that your parents would like for you to do. You might not want to, and they might not even go into your room because that room is off limits. But how wonderful would that be? So I would recommend do a chore that you don't really want to do, but do it and say, this is for you. This is for you, God. That, that's how I would start. Okay. And then it just kind of snowballs into the other yeah. stuff. Okay, so like, how I think of like making my bed in the morning is like, it's a task getting done. It's like your first task of the day getting done. Right. So maybe like, it can be a form of, of prayer. A prayer too. So if you already make your bed, um, you know, you could just add this little thing. And so maybe you make it a little extra better, or I don't know if that's even correctly said, but you make it a little bit neater or something like that because it's going for God. It's going for your maker, let's say. You know? So that, that's how I would, and anything like that. And anything in life can do that. Now, I have learned that. I, that's not my own invention or my own thought. I learned that from from these priests that were telling us these the, these meditations, that were sharing these meditations. Yeah. Okay, so how do you look like you're called to holiness at work here at Church? At work, well, uh, as much as I can, I try to go to daily mass. Okay. Um, I try to make it at least once a week now, but I, if I can make it every day, I would love to come every day, but the schedule sometimes doesn't allow. Um, I say my rosary every day, um, sometimes two. Uh, I do that usually during when I walk, but like sometimes here if I have an exam, like for, during final exams, you'll see me with the rosaries. I, that's what I do during final exams, and then also um, in lunch duty I say a rosary, so I have that with me. And then we say prayer at school, and then have um, certain things in my office that help remind me that I am I am trying to do God's will. So like. Like, like, for example, I have a, um, the, a photograph of Pier Giorgio Frassati okay. in my office, uh, San Jose Maria Escriva. I have another one that says, no matter who's king, uh, no, no matter who's president, Jesus is my king, you know, with the elections, okay. stuff like that. So things, things like that that remind me. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I guess I'm also involved with the pro-life club, which is yeah, very linked okay. to, to uh, our faith. So, how does your relationship with God guide your goals in life? Um, when I, I, I had actually been away a little bit from the church for about 10 years, and when I came back in the year 2000, the priest that helped me come back said, uh, you need to have friends that are Catholic. You need to surround yourself with friends that are Catholic. And so I started doing that, and once I started doing that, then, other things I had to choose. I had to choose, for example, right now I don't go see an R movie, a rated R movie, um, uh, except for the one that, I, that just came out, which is unplanned, which has nothing to do with sex or violence. It has to do with, well, another type of, it has to do with abortion. That's, but I don't usually go to those R movies because I find them that they, they can kind of get all sorts of thoughts in my head, and I don't want to do that. So I try to stay away from that kind of temptation. Um, I, um, so, so you're taking actions, like, to get away from temptation? To get away from certain, certain music, certain songs, oh, right, yeah. like I don't want to listen to them because they are, they are, they are, they, they can become, they can lead you somewhere else and uh, that way. Um, I don't go to certain places because it's going to make me uncomfortable or make me, yeah, it's a, it's a source of temptation, and I don't want to do. I don't want to go there. Okay. So I guess. So, um, how does your role? How what role does mass play in your life? Uh, it, it's a very important role, and I, I wish I could go every day. I mean, I think if I guess once my kids are away from my house, I'll probably go every day. Uh, it's just that now the schedule, and they get up later, and sometimes I can't get out of the house on time. Um, mass. Um, Again, I've learned this th slowly. Mass, I used to think that I had to be entertained at Mass. I, I used to think that um, 
it had to be the music had to be great, the priest had to speak so well, the mass had to be a little shorter, all these requirements. But then when I have learned slowly that really mass, part of the mass is being present at the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross in Calvary. So I try to imagine, gosh, what if I were there? I would not get distracted. I would not be thinking about what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I would be like totally immersed in that moment. And so to me, because I've learned this, it's like the highest form of prayer. And so I unite my life, my imperfect and life, incomplete life to that sacrifice. And then it just, it just raises it all up. Do you think going to Mass is one, one of the most important like, paths? Or... Yes, I think for a Christian, uh, yes. And it's because, again, I also learned this. And, and we're asked to go to Mass once a week. And I think, well, the, the Jewish people went on the Sabbath. And, and lots of religions have a one-week uh, cycle, so to speak. And there must be something human about that, psychological about that. And, and the way when I learned about this is that once a week you touch base with your group. Just like I imagine your soccer team, if you don't go for two or three weeks, you're completely disconnected. You have no clue what's going on. But once a week, I know you have to go more often, right? You have to go every day. Um, but that you stay in the flock then. You, you still so you stay um, in the circle. You stay in the circle because then when you start not going to mass at least <coughs> once a week, then you start going here, you start going here, and then the analogy that I heard was, well, when you have a flock of sheep, if the sheep stay together, the wolf has a harder time getting one of them, that he will get the one that went astray. Mm -hmm. He will get that one. So the wolf is temptations, the wolf is people that tell you, oh no, your religion you know, is not good, that kind of stuff, and so you get away from your group. So the mass is kind of like a safe haven. It's like a safe haven, it's like a regrouping. Okay. It's like a regrouping, and so if one is half awake in the mass, you get some message from the priest, and then also the prayer of the, of the whole thing, the Eucharistic prayer, and all of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what what do you engage with the sacraments? How I mean, what do you engage with the sacraments? How often and why? Okay. So, um, well, the Eucharist, the sacrament of the Eucharist, as often as I can. And then there's the sacrament of reconciliation about once a month. And are is Pablo and Diego being baptized? Yeah, yeah, they're baptized. They have made their first communion, and then Pablo now is going to do his confirmation in September. Yeah. Again, the sacraments are those connections that we get, and then also um, the uh, the lifelines. Those are lifelines. I tell my kids and I tell whoever wants to hear that, for example, the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, there's nothing you can tell the priest that he has not heard before. So sometimes we feel, oh, gosh, I can't believe I did this, I have to, well, he has heard it already probably. And then also the fact that we have to say the words to, to another person, we have to actually say, this is what I did wrong, I think makes us more accountable. I think it's really, it's a very smart thing because the minute you have to tell somebody, I did this wrong, you're like, I am becoming very humble and uh, hopefully will change or begin the seeds of change. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, so what, <coughs> what sacrifices do you make for your faith and why do you make them? Um, well, uh, I guess for the faith, um, the sacrifices would be that I may have to say no to certain, like some friends might invite me, like somebody invited me to go see a Broadway show that is, to my opinion, is inappropriate, mm -hmm. and I had to tell her no. I said, no, I can't, I don't watch that. Um, sacrifices for my faith, uh, uh, not eating before Mass, so if I'm hungry, I just have to wait till after Mass was, I don't want to eat, you know, we're supposed to keep that our Eucharistic fast before. During Lent, I do also fasting. Uh, I will skip breakfast or something. So, and I love to eat, so <laughs> it's a kind of hard for me. The sacrifices for the faith, I guess. I don't, I don't buy from certain companies that um, 
for example, that are engaged in abortion uh, okay. contributions, or even if I know of this, like who, who are um, really uh, unfair to their workers, I try to keep that in mind. So, okay. yeah. So going back to the Broadway yeah. situation, so you're kind of like rejecting um, an, like an action that would take you away from, uh, away from God. Right, because it would be, I know that I would be watching something inappropriate. Okay. So I, I just, and, and my friend knows me, uh, and so I felt fine telling her, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go see that. So she was, yeah, I know that. But, uh, but um, so it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't so risky to, to say, it was not such a big sacrifice, but I do have to still say, I have to express, no, I can't go see this. And do you think more people should take more action to like reject? certain situations in order for them to get closer to God? I, I think, I mean, I would say yes, but I know it's very hard. And, and I think, especially young people, have a lot of pressure. The peer pressure is enormous for you guys. And so, um, yes, if all your friends are choosing to, whatever it is, go see this particular movie, it's hard to say, no, I can't, or maybe you will say, I have something else to do. Maybe you could say something, not a lie, but say, you know, I've got something else to do, which is, yes, I have something else to do not watching that movie. Um, but I think it would make life easier. I th and I can't get into this, but from personal experience, uh, if I had stayed a little closer to God, some things might have gone a little better. And so I think that I think there is something to that that if you if you kind of if you kind of stay faithful to your principles and to your faith, some things are a lot easier. So do you think like young people should maybe delete social media or like? Any other? Uh, well, not delete it because I think you guys communicate. Or like take a break from it. Take a break every once in a while, for sure, for sure. Have a moment, because I think what's happening too is we're not relating. Like, we're not, like, if you look out and everybody's like this, so they're not relating. So that's one thing. I think social <coughs> media is the, is the door to a lot of bad stuff. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of bad stuff coming in. So I don't know if there are more filters to put in, or just be careful what you search. Um, uh, the other day, Vida Lai was watching a little YouTube video. It was a very innocent YouTube video, and I scrolled down into the other choices, and there was like pornography towards the bottom. And I said, Vida Lai, do you, do you? She goes, no, I just stay up here. But I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is right there. And so um, I think for young people, it's hard. It's very hard. I get it. Um, uh, staying away from certain parts of social media. Even, even school dances pro are problematic, if you will, especially when the girls come dressed very provocatively. I mean, how does a young man with all the hormones jumping deal with that? You know, and so that's hard, that's kind of, but that, that thing is, I don't know how you solve that except talking to the girls. Yeah. Because I think, you know, what can you say? Hey, no, don't wear that. I mean, you, it would be great if the, if the boy could say that, but it's very difficult to say that. It's very, very hard. And it's not realistic. Okay, so yeah. going on to the last question. Sure. How does your relationship with Christ influence the way influence the way you participate in, in, in society? Yes. Well, I guess um, I try to do things that I. I guess. I guess really the way I see it is I like to do things that I could do if Jesus was with me. I know that sounds really corny, but it's, uh, or like some people say, well, if your mother could be with you, could you do those things, you know? And so it's, it's kind of, I'm always thinking like that. So does like that give you confidence? To... Yes, it gives me strength and it gives me confidence that at least I'm trying to do the right thing. Okay. And I don't know, I'm not always successful, but I'm trying, that's my goal. Um, and, and just seeing it like that. And so whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, has, a, has this dimension that I, 
I'm trying to be aware of what he would say. What would, like, what would Jesus do? You know how they have those so bracelets. Would, would you like uh, learn it? What you do? Or like, because you think, because like you think Jesus is watching you. Like, would you like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very much so. Like, would you like not do certain stuff because you have like you know that Jesus is watching you? That's my 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 intention is not to do certain things. Like I would need for him to be riding with me in the side in my in the seat, the passenger seat, because then too when I drive I get really like angry. Okay. And so that you know that, that I, that's an area I have to work on. For example, I get very angry with people cutting in front of me and stuff like that. So I am working on that. Okay. But that's that's how it is. So that's it. Okay. So thank you for your okay, time. Okay. Thank you. Good questions, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with this. You have to edit.